Yirmiyahu was a prophet, was a good chaver of mine. Never understood a single word he said, but we helped him to drink his yin. And we always have some mighty fine yin. Singing Sim Chadli Olam, Kol Ayil Adin Nam, Sim Chad to the Dagi Min the Deep Blue Sea, Sim Chad to you and me. Welcome to the Haftorah Pathora video podcast where we might not bring joy to the world, but we do talk about prophets like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and this week, Isaiah. Yeah, we're back to Isaiah. Yes, we are, Rick. We read from Isaiah more than any other prophet or from any other book. And just why we read from Isaiah this week is something we'll get to in just a moment. But first, I'm Larry Herman, drinking some very fine coffee for a change, and talking Haftar with my very fine Haver, the king of cantillation, Rick Muller. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing very well. Glad to see you're drinking coffee this morning. But I was wondering about your explanation for why this particular selection from Isaiah was made for reading on the Shabbat of Yitro when the Torah reading includes the Ten Commandments. And knowing me, you expect a very lengthy and very interesting explanation, right? Of course. Indeed, I do. I'll just sit back in my chair, reach for a cold one, water a course, put my feet up, and listen. Well, Rick, I hate to disappoint or burst your bubble, but the answer to the question, why these selections this week, is, I don't know. And even more, I can hardly offer you anything close to a satisfactory answer. No kidding. My pal Larry, without anything to say, I never thought I'd see the day. Now, now hold your horses. I said I don't have an answer to the question, but I didn't say that I don't have anything to say. Actually, I have much to say. I just can't offer a good explanation of how the Haftarah is connected to the Parsha. Well, you could read the explanation on page 451 of the Eitz Chaim Chumash. I did, and I invite our viewers to do the same. And if they find the explanation satisfactory or even comprehensible, I will commend them. Or, I could offer the simplistic explanation that both the Parsha and the Haftorah describe moments of divine revelation. But allow me to make a few observations on the Haftorah itself to explain my befuddlement. Allowance granted. Thank you. Well, to start, I'll observe that once again, we're given a choice of sorts. The Sephardim read the entirety of chapter 6 of Isaiah, 13 verses in all, but no more. Us Ashkenazim add the first seven verses of chapter seven. And then, or the first, yeah, first six verses of chapter seven. And then two verses from the middle of chapter nine. As I'll explain in a moment, in my view, there's absolutely nothing to connect these three sections, let alone anything to connect them to our Parsha. So there's that. A conundrum, you might say. Exactly, a conundrum. But let's briefly review chapter six. Robert Alter, among other commentators, identifies chapter 6 as the real beginning of Isaiah's prophetic mission. The prior five chapters of Isaiah were all poetry and were probably written later, perhaps not even by the self-same author. Our reading is the commissioning of Isaiah as a prophet, as an emissary of God. And Isaiah's appointment couldn't begin with a more auspicious and grand, and in a more auspicious or grandiose fashion. His version of the Holy One seated on his throne, surrounded by seraphim, and calling out what has become one of the most famous and common of all the verses in our liturgy, Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzavaot, Moloch, Ho Haaretz, Kivodo. So that's the revelation part, like fireworks at Sinai, right? True, true. And what then follows is the dance that occurs upon the appointment of many prophets, including Moses. Isaiah claims that he's not worthy. Why? Because he has impure lips. But one of the seraphim remedies that by purifying his lips with a glowing piece of coal from the altar, perhaps the divine altar. Sounds like baby Moses and the angel Gabriel before Pharaoh. Indeed. It is, although the story of Moses burning his lips on the coal is Midrash, 
and not connected to the to Parshat Yitro. But to continue, God then asks Isaiah, "Et mi eshlach, whom shall I send?" To which Isaiah, suddenly filled with confidence, replies without hesitation, "Hinini, shelacheni, here I am to save the day." Sounds like Mighty Mouse. No angels there, though. No matter. Same confidence. By the way, I'll note that the trope on this rather dramatic exchange is quite pedestrian. Now, don't you go insulting the trope. No, I won't. I know I won't. But then it gets really strange because what God tells Isaiah to tell the people is a prophecy of doom and despair. In verse 9, Isaiah is to tell the people, Indeed, you must hear, but you will not understand. Indeed, you must see, but you will not know. I think I once had a teacher who started class with those words. <laughs> Maybe it's a divine ploy to get their attention. Perhaps, but it gets worse. In verse 10, God tells Isaiah to do everything to make sure that the people don't understand, lest the people repent and be saved. God doesn't want the people to repent. The chapter concludes with God revealing to Isaiah that the towns and land will be laid to waste and people will be exiled, and only a Zera Kodesh, a holy seed, will remain. Okay, not very hopeful. No, it's not. But then, as I said, the Ashkenazim go on, and we read six more verses from chapter 7. And these verses describe the complicated geopolitical machinations that take place about a generation later between King, ah King Ahaz of Judea, King Pekach, of the kingdom of Israel and King Ratzin of Aram and the Assyrians who are coming to perhaps defeat them all. Isaiah and his son is giving counsel to, they are giving counsel to Ahaz. And what's that got to do with the prophecy in chapter six? Not a clue, nor with what it's got to do with the Parsha. But then it gets even better or rather more confusing since we add those two verses from chapter 9, skipping ahead two more chapters, yeah. which go, For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and leadership is on his shoulders, etc., etc., etc. And so, I ask you, Rick, what has this got to do with anything? Another conundrum. A conundrum. Well, maybe I can lift our spirits with a little trope talk. You always do. First of all, you know how I like angels, right? Well, I'm more of a Dodgers fan. Ha, uh, very punny. <laughs> Seraphim, the kind with wings, who call out, Kadosh. And then there's a pasek there separating, Kadosh. And then, Kadosh, by itself, Adonai Tzavot. That's a fantastic combination there, and uh, it really it really separates each word and it, it 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 highlights each one all by itself. You're raising my spirits already. And then there's not one but two pazers. Sometimes we don't have any pazers in Haftorah. The first is on verse 11 of chapter six, and the second one is uh, the beginning of uh, chapter seven. So those are, are uh, markings of, of waking up and, uh, and pay attention to the next piece. That's They're gonna uplifting. be a, a little bit uplifting, yeah. They are uplifting. I do love your pazers. Right, and I know you love the Kadmavi Azlas and there's a bunch of those. Yep, a good Kadmavi Azla will put bounce in my step and a smile on my face. <laughs> Not to mention a pair of Gershaims and four Zakaf Gadols three on the word Vayomer, or a variation, and finally a great zarkas Segol combination on verse uh, three of chapter seven. All right, again, announcing that God is uh, talking um, Rick, to Isaiah. Rick, you've convinced me. There's no conundrum in a Haftarah that some good trope and your wonderful chanting won't cure. So why don't you just chant the Haftarah from the beginning to the end for us, maybe commenting as you go along, and we'll just listen and let the words and the music take us for a spiritual ride. Okay, the Haftorah starts on page 452. 
and the bracha first. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Amen. Bishnat mohut ha-melech uziyahu va'er et Adonai yoshev al-kisei ram v'shulav Meleim et ha Serafim omdim mi ma'alo shesh kenafayim shesh kenafayim lechad vishtayim yechase fanav uvishtayim yechase raglav Uvishtaim ye ofev. Vekaraze el zeviamar. Kadosh. 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 Adonai tsvaot. Melo cholaret kvodo. Vayanu. Amot asipim mikol akore vehabait yimale ashan vaumahar oili chinid meti ki ish teme svataim anohi uftoch am teme svataim anohi Yoshev ki et ha-melech Adonai tzvahot ra'u enai Vaya'of elai echad min asrafim Uv'yado ritzpa Vemel kachayim lakach me'al ha-mizbeach Vayaga alpi vayomer hine nagaze asfatecha besar avonecha vechatatcha techupar vayeshma ekol adonai omer et mi eshlach Umi yelech lanu va omar hineni shlacheni va yomer lech ve amarta lam hazeh shimu shamoa ve altavinu oru rao ve alte dau hashmein. Lev ha'am hazeh ve'oznav ha'chved ve'enav ha'sha Pen yerev enav u'voznav yishma U'lvavo yavin v'ashav ve'rafalo V'omar ad matai Adonai Vayomer arasher im shahu arim me'en yoshev uvatim me'en adam ve'ha'adama tisha'esh mama v'richak Adonai et adam v'rabah azuva the Kerev Haaret, the Od Bach Assyria, the Shava, the Haita Leva Er, Kaela, the Kaalon, Asher, the Shalechet, Matsevet Bam, Zera Kodesh, Matsavta. That Kodesh echoes the three Kadoshes from before. So just I just realized that, but there's another Kodosh, Kodesh for you. 
There you go. And, and then the pause there, um, announcing the next piece. Ben Yotam, Ben Uziyahu, Melech Yehuda, Allah, Ritzin, Melech Aram, Ufekach, Ben Rimal Yahu, Melech Yisrael, Yerushalayim, La Milchama, Aleha, Velo Yachol, Lihilachem Aleha. By you, God, live a David Lemur, Naha Aram, Alephraim, Bayana Levavo, Ulvavamo, Kinoa Atse Yaar, Mipne Ruach. And here's the Zarka, um, again announcing a, a separate uh, um, a prophecy. By Omer Adonai, El Yishayahu, Tzena Likrat Achaz, Ata Ushar Yashuv Benecha, El Ketzei Te'alat Abrecha El Yonah, El Mesilat Sedecho Veis. Marta a love, Ishamer Vashkeit, Altira Ulvavcha, Ayerach, Mishne Zanvot, Audim, A Ashenim, A Ele, Bohori Af, Ritzim Varam. Uven Rima Yahu Ya An Kia Atz Alecha Aram Ra Ephraim Uven Rima Yahu Lemor Na Alev Yehuda Un Kitsena Benav Ki Enna Elenu Benam Lich Melech Betocha Et ben tav al ki yelad yulad lanu ben nitan lanu vati hamisra al shich mo vai krash mo pele yo eats el gibor aviad sar shalom. Lemar be hamisra, ul shalom en kates. Al kisei David ve amamlachto, leachin otah ul saadah, ba mishpat uvit daka. Meata ve arolam kin at Adonai tzavot. Beautiful, Rick. You know, before we go, I just have a couple of observations about the trope. I don't know whether you have answers. Very often, it seems to me, the pazer is followed by a kanma ve'azla, which is usually preceded by a tlisha, either a gedola ketana. And I notice in verse 11 of chapter 6, it's a tlisha ketana and a yes. kadmav avazla, but then in verse in the first verse of chapter seven, after the pazer, it's a tlisha gedola. Yeah, it's more common the ketana. <clears throat> so the fact that um, the rabbis put it to music the other way <clears throat> is is dealing with achaz differently than with um, the uh, first one arasher. And then so, yeah. And then in the first, in the in in verse five of chapter nine, we've got a kadma ve'azla followed by a talisha gedola, which seems to me to be not so common, especially when there's no other dramatic trope after that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's just a different combination. 
makes you, uh, if you're into it, it makes you sit up and, and uh, look at it a little bit uh, more closely. And uh -huh. I know that our viewers and our listeners sit up and listen closely to your, your Haftarah chanting all the time. One would hope. And if any of you have any ideas about why this Haftarah was, was chosen, this selection was chosen for the Haftarah, or anything else you want to communicate with us, write us an email. Let us know. Um, Rick's email and my email should be appearing on the screen, I hope. And we'd love to hear from you. In any case, we wish you all a Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see you next week. Shabbat Shalom. Be safe.